In this lesson, we're talking about specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity allows us to calculate how much energy is released into the surroundings from an object as heat. And thus, we calculate, for example, its temperature change. So what is specific heat capacity? Well, what it really is defined as is the amount of energy, which is in joules, needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So different substances will have different energy needs. So one of the examples we're going to use is water. Water is 4.19 joules to raise 1 gram by 1 degree Celsius versus copper. Copper is only 0 0.39 joules to raise 1 gram by 1 degree Celsius. So you can see that the water takes a lot more energy needed to raise that temperature. So how can we see specific heat capacity? Well, let's talk about boiling water. So example, boiling water. When you boil water, what is heating up first? Well, you might notice that the air around the kettle heats up fast. Then you might notice the metal kettle heats up next. And lastly, then the water heats up last. You're also going to notice that when you turn off the stove with boiling water, the water takes the longest to cool down, the metal kettle cools down next, and then the air cools down pretty much immediately. So this is another example of what you could say, for example, why coastal cities are much more milder in temperature than in uh, continental cities. So is there a specific heat capacity formula? And there is. So in this case, we actually use and calculate this energy using the specific heat capacity. It's Q is equal to mc times delta T, where Q is the energy in joules, M is the mass in grams. C is the specific heat capacity. In joules per gram degrees, um, grams degrees Celsius. For example, water is 4.19. And then delta T is the temperature final. Take away the temperature initial. And we measure this in degrees Celsius. So this is our formula to solve for specific capacity. Using this formula, we can always calculate how much energy is needed to heat up certain substances. So let's look at the first example. First example here is how much energy is needed to warm up a 300 gram cup of water from 10 degrees Celsius to our body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. So to plug this in, we look at Q is equal to mc delta t. We want to solve for the energy. We have a mass of 300 grams. What is the specific heat capacity of water? Well, specific heat capacity of water is 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. It will always be this value for water. Different substances have different C values. So let's multiply by 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius times the change in temperature, which is the final temperature of 37, that's Tf, and the initial temperature of 10 degrees, that's Ti. So 37 degrees Celsius minus 10 degrees Celsius. So let's solve. You will also see that your units start to cancel out because you have a gram on top, gram on the bottom. Celsius will also cancel out. So you're left with just the unit joules. So what is the total energy needed? 
300 times 4.19 times 37 minus 10, that's 27. And you're going to get, oops, 300 times 4.19 times 27. You're going to need an amount of energy of 33,939 joules is needed to heat up that much water. So where would you see this example happen? Well, let's say for example you drank some cold water and it has to reach to your body temperature. Your body actually will provide this much energy to heat up that water. Let's look at example number two. What final temperature will be attained by a 250 milliliter cup of water that's 5 degrees Celsius if it just absorbs 2,000 joules? Note that density of water is 1 gram per 1 milliliter. So that means this 250 milliliter cup of water is also 250 grams. So again, Q is equal to mc delta t. Let's write out our whole equation. Q is equal to mc t final minus t initial. We want to solve for t final. So if I were to solve for this, I would divide both sides by mass and c. So what I'm left with is t final minus t initial is equal to Q divided by MC. My last thing is add TI to both sides. So I'm going to be left with just T final is equal to Q divided by mass times C plus T initial. Well, let's plug our values in. 2000 divided by 250 times 4.19 plus 5 degrees Celsius. What is TF? Well, in this case, we could plug in and solve. So 2,000 joules divided by 250 divided by 4.19, add 5. And we see that our temperature of water only raises by up to 6.9 degrees Celsius. So it went up slightly with 2,000 joules. But what happens if that uh, compound is, for example, copper, not water? So again, you have the same mass of copper, you have the same initial starting temperature of copper, and it absorbs the same amount of energy, but this time copper's specific capacity is much lower. It's only 0 0.39. What would the final temperature be this time? So again, you're going to have the same equation, so T final is equal to Q divided by MC plus T initial. Q this time is still 2,000 joules, M is still 250 grams, but this time your C is 0 0.39 joules per gram degree Celsius. And you're still going to add to initial temperature of 5 degrees Celsius. So let's solve this time. 2000 divided by 250 divided by 0 0.39 plus 5. And you're going to see this time the final temperature ends up being 25.5 degrees Celsius. TF is 25.5 degrees Celsius. So what you might notice is that same amount of energy, but water only went up by 1.9 degrees Celsius, while the copper went up by over 20 degrees Celsius. So copper could actually change the temperature faster because of its lower specific heat capacity. The last example here is, what is the specific heat capacity of iron if it takes 125 joules of heat to raise 111 grams by 2.5 degrees Celsius? So you're trying to find the specific capacity, which is C. Well, what is C? Well, C is equal to the mass, or the energy, Q, divided by the mass times the temperature. Because the units of it is joules over grams degrees Celsius. So if I plug in my joules, 125 joules, divided by the mass, which is 111 grams, times its temperature change is 2.5 degrees Celsius. What is C of iron? And you're going to see the C of iron is 125 divided by 111 divided by 2.5. It's 0 0.45 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So iron is actually a bit hard to change in terms of energy versus copper. Copper is only 0 0.39. As always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.